Hello to my Aries. This is Queen Amunra coming to you with your general reading. Let's get into it, Aries. Let's get into it. Let's see what's in your cards. Talking to you wherever Aries is in your birth chart, not just your sun sign. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. All right, let's get into it. Let's see what's in your cards. Again, I'm talking to you wherever Aries is in your birth chart, including if Aries is your Chiron, your MC or IC. Chiron, wherever it's placed in your birth chart, right? As we're closing out this cycle, let's see what is so rare about you that it's something that sets you apart from everybody, every other human being on this planet. See, there's no one like anybody else on the planet, right? And this cycle was really all about, you know, that blue moon, that super blue moon that we had, that rarity in you that sets you apart from everybody else. So everybody has something that's comes along in people's lives as once in a blue moon. So let's see what's rare about you. Talking to you wherever Aries is in your birth chart. Let's see. Let's see what's rare about you. All right. Okay. It looks like somebody's ability to create additional income for yourself, which I'm not really surprised. I'm really, really not surprised by that. You have this, um, here we have the page of pentacles. Somebody's going to feel like they have a whole new lease on life because somebody's starting to think at least eight streams of income. And I'm not surprised. The source is saying take the blindfolds off. Take the blindfolds off because something about your energy, and I've said this about you all in the past. Here we have the star card. You, everybody's a star in their own right. So this card connects us with hope, um, bliss, and optimism, right? And I've said this to you all, like especially when I first started um, uploading Aries videos and people were like, oh, you seem like you like Aries more than everybody else. <laughs> if you've been with me since the very beginning, oh, you seem like you like those comments. So I was like, okay, let's give everybody the same equal time. But anyway, so Source is saying to you, you're moving forward in child life. You're taking the blindfolds off. You're moving on from something and childlike faith and giving people an opportunity to grow like really giving like not holding on so tight to something that you feel like is a value to you that's actually hurting people like it would be like holding on to your kids or holding on to your grandkids or holding on to this idea you know like you're afraid of just like letting something go and grow right because these are the same energies right here you know, and same energies right here, just different ages, same dog, different ages, right? So it's like somebody has been so afraid of just letting something go and grow that you're missing out on opportunities to just, you know, just be a star yourself. Like you're missing out on your own purpose yourself. You know how sometimes parents live so much for their kids, they almost like, okay, when they, when they're empty nesters, they don't know what to do. They they so big. They so used to washing clothes, drying clothes, cleaning up for the kids, making the bed, lunches, carpool. It's like when when em, the whole idea of empty nester is so terrifying for some people. Kids can't get married. They can't have kids. They can't. There's nothing. They can't go through the bumps and bruises of life. So it's just saying, take the blindfolds off. Take the blindfolds off because you have at least eight streams of income in you and start pouring into yourself so that you can show, you can, when you start pouring into you, this is you showing compassion, then you'll see the compassion that other people will show you. And also you'll show yourself, you'll see more that you can pour more compassion into other people. But somebody has been holding on to something of value to them, almost like using it as like a, like it's, it's, you own something. And so, so it's like we don't own each other. Everybody has a star in their own right, meaning everybody has a purpose. Everybody has a purpose. So if somebody's been holding on to something like it's their property, that is, that's a, that's a demonic spirit. That's a demonic spirit to hold on to people as if they're your property. Mm -mm. So it says release it, release it in love, release it in love. Here we have the eight of wands. So it says, if you can get away from something fast, it sources will speed up some blessings for you of like your ideas. So mm -mm. nobody's anybody's property. Here we have the Knight of Wands here. Here we have the Knight of Wands. So it's almost like somebody is saying, sources saying, 
it's it's like you're holding on to something that may belong to somebody that feel like okay this is giving me some kind of leverage like i'm gonna hold on to somebody's kids or i'm gonna hold on to something that's of value to people and so to say you're gonna feel like you have a whole new lease on life when you release something into the universe so that you can create at least eight streams of income for yourself so like i said before so I was just trying to tell somebody to take the blindfolds off and move on in childlike faith. Two situations in particular, so it's saying move on in childlike faith. Move forward in childlike faith. Have compassion for yourself, but also have compassion for other people. Remember, your card is the tower card. So the tower can fall either way. And um, so here we have the two of cups. Somebody is moving on from some past disappointments. Somebody is saying, you know, you're moving on from some past disappointments. Your head and heart are no longer going to be at war with each other when it comes to something. And now you give an opportunity to create multiple streams of income. Because all these ideas, creative ideas keep coming to you. But if you are holding on to some toxic ideas, you're mixing toxicity with clear ideas that source is downloading into your spirit. Yep, and so source is saying you got six six six. Like somebody is making something all about them, like demonizing something. Like you know, some that's a demon, or somebody has demons, or something. You're saying somebody's saying demonizing something, but so it's three six. You got six 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 here, and so source is saying you're gonna have to cut ties with that because source God, Most High God, created the devil. Okay, so we're first of all, everybody know that just in basic just understanding. God created the devil, right? And that would be our carnal mind, our flesh. So source is saying when people demonize other people instead of when you can pray for people, source is saying you have there's options. <laughs> there's options. There are options. You have options, right? So I see somebody closing out a cycle like this is seven of wands, like night and eight. So night could be involved in something, right? Source is saying to you, I'm seeing somebody is seven is the number for completion something is complete right and so source is saying you are going to move on from something but you got to take the blindfolds off because all this water here all of this water here hold on here we have the emperor card right something is going to push you to the light side of emperor instead of it's my way or the highway something is going to put you to the light side of emperor which is I need to get more structured and more authoritative when it comes to my emotions, my sexuality, my sensuality, my feelings, my creativity, my own intuition. I need to add some more structure to this and, and be more authoritative because otherwise, if you're stuck in it's my way or the highway, like I said, that tower, you all are ruled by the tower. So here we have the Ten of Cups. Yeah, source is trying to put somebody in a more divine space, being around some energies where they're div divine connections. That's what source is trying to put you around, more divine connections, you know, so you can meet somebody, you know, um, meet some energies. Here we have the Ten of Wands. I see you being booked and busy and not carrying around any bitterness and burdens of whatever dirt other people's dirty water like that would be like somebody carrying people's past around with that. i know this about this person i know that about this person it's like holding on to that kind of mess uh, somebody's sexual history who they dating that that is so useless when you're trying to when you're trying to connect with your sacred group of energies and the fact that source is saying you have at least eight streams of income in you. And so source is saying you're going to feel like you have a whole new lease on life if you take your blindfolds off. So here we have, because somebody is highly creative here. So you're going to have to cut ties with holding on. That's the number six. Six is in the shape of a person who is um, like a, a rounded back with a bulging belly. Like that's a person who's like... You haven't released something toxic, like you've been holding on to something. And that's generational. Like somebody holds on to people like they're their property. Here we have Queen of Wands here. And so Source wants you to adjust your crown. That's true King Queen energy is recognizing that everybody has purpose 
And and so all if that it requires structure. Everybody has a star slash sun sign, but everybody also has a moon sign that balances them out. So when people hold on to people like they're their property and they don't give them an opportunity to shine and operate in their own uniqueness so that they'll find out something about themselves that only comes comes along once in a blue moon in people's lives, it causes people to it's just like I said, it's just like just carrying poison around. Here we have the Queen of Cups. And in this day and time, don't nobody care about how many times somebody's been married, dated somebody, you know, how many, uh, who's attracted to whom or not. When people hold on to that kind of gossip and toxicity, people don't trust people. Nobody wants to be around that because it doesn't show compassion. It doesn't show true compassion. I'm talking about pouring into yourself and pouring into other people. You know, you know how many people run around talking about they know this about people. Oh, I know who they dated. I know, I know who their parents. So I know who they. All this out the window. Like at this in this day with all this water right here, nobody even cares about people's sexual preference. I mean, I'm just keeping it 100. People don't care whether people are gay, straight, with their pronoun is. People are trying to be respectful of that kind of stuff today. Like people. All of that holding on to, mm -mm. that would be a massive turn off to a sacred, when you're trying to build sacred bonds and you're trying to operate in childlike faith, that would be a massive, that would be a major turn off to people. There's only a certain group of people who like to hold on to other people's toxic, you know, because everybody has a past. Everybody has a past. The source is saying, you, I'm saying compassion here. Like you want compassion, but you want other people to show you compassion. So it's just saying you want your sign is the cardinal sign. That's the initiator. So when you're saying you want other people to show you compassion, you're gonna have to also initiate showing compassion. Yeah, everything is not a chess game. Everything is not a chess. That's a turn off. <laughs> That is, I put all these mind games and all this other stuff. Like, that's so outdated. I mean, I don't know. But somebody's going to have to develop a different kind of strategy. Here we have the five of wands instead of the bait and switch. Somebody's going to have to develop a different kind of strategy. Here we have the page of swords. So somebody could have been feeling like they're walking on a tightrope. But that's going to come to an end very soon. Like, having a whole lot of ideas, you know, about a whole lot of things. And just, like, you know, holding a lot of water and... Again, peep just dirty water, holding a lot of dirty water. But what Source is trying to get you to do is operate in childlike faith, flush out all of that toxicity, like do a deep spiritual cleanse is what Source is trying to help somebody to learn how to do. And recognize how gifted and talented you are and something about your energy only comes across once in a lifetime. Like, I mean, not once in a lifetime, but you know, once in a blue moon. We had a super blue moon this cycle. Something about your energy comes across once in a blue moon. Like you're a person who has it in you to create. Water is about creativity. Create at least eight streams of income. And so how do you create eight streams of income while holding on to dirty water? Like holding on to other people's dirt while you're holding on to your own dirt. You know, like, like like using it as leverage and then saying it's a David and Goliath situation. Something is a something is a David and Goliath situation. So source is saying to you, you're gonna have to release something. You're gonna have to release something. So yep, here we have the nine of wands here. Yep, and so somebody has come through a long and arduous journey and try not to go back into something where they're hurt. You know, somebody could have been in a um you know, in a um, physical altercation. Yeah, something could have happened really, really fast. Like something could have happened really, really, really fast. And just, like, like I said, somebody going to have to release something. Because that's the only way you're going to see what would you have, like, in inspiring other people. Um, somebody could have, somebody that you love could have felt like they were in a David and Goliath situation. Like there was something that they couldn't overcome. And just like I said, you know, maybe somebody was bigger or stronger than they are. Could have been a fight. Something could have happened, you know, with somebody, but somebody gonna have to release something. So that's all I can say. 
Yeah, here we have the King of Wands. It looks like you're inspiring, you motivate a whole lot of people, but there's a lot of energies that like they seem like they're familiar with you. You're around mirroring spirits and people like they're familiar with you and just like you being hot headed. Look this hot right here, somebody feels like you're a hot head, you know, and like I said, it was your way or the highway in some in some spaces and somebody's gonna have to release that. Somebody's gonna have to release that. So I don't know who that's for. So, so if somebody's a man, somebody feels like you're a hothead. And so people who have been in violent situations or been manipulated or, you know, like in toxic situations, they'll pick up on that real soon and be like, oh, no. Nah, mm -mm. If they feel like there's a temper or something, they're not necessarily operating in fear. They're actually operating in wisdom. And that's not how you get people to see this card, right? This is not how somebody gets people to obey something. It's putting people in this kind of a situation. That's not how people get people to obey. That would be like saying, if I can't get to, because I'm looking at youthful energy here. That's page. That's youthful energy. It's like something of value to somebody. You know, like, okay, we're going to play a game of chess. Here we're gonna play a game. We're gonna do such and such and such and such. Um, like somebody has on blindfolds, they'll never see something coming, you know, and putting together a strength two and five uh, two and five and seven, some kind of strategy, you know, or something, you know, whatever it is. I'm looking at when I look at the cards here, this is a very interesting reading here because there's a lot of fire here. And something is trying to get you to your king of wands and not be so hot headed. And, you know, instead using that fire to pray for people to come out of wilderness situations. Like, sources really try to get somebody to the light side of emperor energy. The light side of emperor energy. Let's see what else we got um, going on here. Let's see what else we have going on here. Yeah, I hope nobody's in some kind of a violent situation. I hope nobody's in some kind of a violent situation for some reason because I'm looking at all this right here. It's nine of wands. I hope nobody put anybody in a violent situation. Let's see. In survival mode. I hope somebody did not put somebody in survival mode. It's a death card. These two cards right here is like a tower moment, some kind of an awakening happening here, right? Um, and so I hope somebody did not put somebody into some kind of a violent situation trying to get back at somebody else. Yeah, I hope somebody didn't put somebody's loved one in some kind of a situation. Because I'm look, this one I'm looking at here in the cards, like somebody was like, you know, something was quick. You know, like two situations were like really fast here. Let me see. Hmm. Yeah, I, ho I hope that's not the case. I really hope that's not the case that somebody would put somebody in some kind of a situation like that. Here we have the Ace of um, Ace of Wands here. Yeah, third eye is now open. Like I said, somebody's coming through a long and arduous journey. Um, and here we have the seven of wands here. Um, it's a lot of, um, when I look at here, I'm seeing people who have succumbed. It's a lot of eights here to the dark side of the number eight. Dark side of the number eight are people who succumb to passive and powerless behavior and people who are egotistical, materialistic, and forceful. So when I look at all this fire here, it's like all this rage and all of this being around bullying types of energies where like something happened. Something happened with something. Um, like I said, some kind of a tower moment. Right here we have the five of um, pentacles here. Something around some kind of emotional wounding. All right. Something having to do with an earth sign. Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo. Feeling left out of something. Some kind of emotional wounding. And just being in survival mode over something. Maybe wanting to be a part of something. Something happened. Here we have the um, Ten of Swords here. And... Um, yeah, so a strategy needs to happen so that... 
it's time to thrive. Like something happened. Something. Let me let me count up these eights here for just a second. Yeah, here we have the um, Knight of Swords. So somebody could have been having some kind of nightmares about something. Somebody could have been having some kind of nightmares about something. Hold on, let me see what else we have. Judgment card. Somebody could have been feeling like they were being judged or under some kind of judgment or something. But it's kind of some death to some kind of judgment about something. Um... It's a lot going on in your reading, though. It's a lot going on. But I see somebody taking a leap of faith and moving forward. Here we have the Queen of um, Queen of Swords here, sitting on your throne, carefully vetting your thoughts. Hold on. Let me add some stuff up here. Hold on a second. We got eight here. Eight here. Eight here with this night energy we got eight here and we have eight here one two three four five So five is the turning point, you know, for something. And um, somebody could have either, like I said, been just burned out, stressed out, um, moving on from something. Something could have caused somebody to say, you know what, they need to get focused. It may not, because this card gives the impression that somebody's running away from something, but that's not what this means. This means somebody is ambitious, driven, focused, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but whatever the anxiety is about a situation, it needs to be going away very, very soon. Um, let's see, six, six, six here. Queen of Cups here, Ten of Cups here. Um, yeah, but <clears throat> with all of this fire here in the cards, when we talk about, so all this fire here, and then we also have the five of pentacles there, right? Some kind of emotional wounding having to do with people not feeling they're not knowing their worth, not knowing their value. So this would be a great time to pull your birth chart and find out what your Chiron is. Find out what your Chiron is. Because that speaks to emotion, like the deep spiritual emotional wound. Because all this fire right here speaks to spiritual spirituality and action so some kind of action could have been taken like i said before um that could have um one two three four five so this is crazy like it, it was almost like a person feeling like they were being jumped um, that, that would be like a David and Goliath, like something overwhelming somebody, like, you know, like being stalked or something like they were being jumped. That's what it felt like you know, for somebody. It's like something felt like, okay, they were being, like, like I said, a David and Goliath situation, being around a lot of familiar spirits, people from being familiar with who they are, you know, where they're, um, where they live, like being familiar with like uh, their family or being familiar with financial situations, like people becoming familiar with something, right? So it, it could be you that you may want to watch out for, that somebody is not coming after you for something. That's what I'm saying. You got to be real careful with the tower moment because there's hope, bliss, and optimism for everybody. And if somebody has hot head energy and sources saying, well, you could have... It, it, certain things, like I said, we're talking about being motivated. This is fire, like motivational power, clarity, whatever. But but fire can also be used for narcissism. It can also be used, 
if it's on the dark side, narcissism, low self-esteem, feelings of low self-worth, those kind of things, is my way or the highway. So you have to choose what side of emperor energy you're on, light or dark side of emperor energy. So, yeah, because like I said, that tower could fall either way. That tower could fall either way. If somebody doesn't have good control over their emotions and that tower falls on you, it can literally make everything that you worked hard for crumble down to the ground. That's why a tower moment is so scary for some people because they just, like I said, impulsively. If you're if you're an impulsive Aries, which like you get mad, you just like impulsively start doing stuff. So it's the same. Yeah. So it's just saying somebody somebody's gonna have to start paying attention to loved ones around them because I feel like either somebody felt like they was getting jumped because this is the five of wands here is like a David and Goliath situation. Like somebody just felt like something was just overbearing or over towering somebody. Something really something could have happened. Um Let me see what else is going to come out of these cards. Here we have pray for them. Yeah, it's all becoming clear. Yeah, so somebody's a changeling. Yeah, so one yes from God is all you need. I see you being booked and busy. Um, somebody's an incubus spirit. That's a male sex demon. Um, you know, or they could have been overtaken by a male sex demon. Like, you know, like somebody's just like, they could be a host for a male sex demon, not overtaken by. But, you know, like I'm saying, like, uh, all a demon needs is a host, you know, so if, if you're, ho if you're hosting a gluttony, you know, or just like fear, doubt, uncertainty about something, but, um, and yeah, somebody also has a demon of lust. Yep. So listen to your inner voice. Um, the angel of prophecy and wisdom. Yep. And laughter is medicine. And so, yeah, so wealth is within somebody's reach. Wealth is within somebody's reach. But when you see this much fire in the car, fire is about like spirituality and action. Source needs somebody to take action and start praying for people instead of adding to praying on people who could be in survival mode. This keeps coming out in your cards. Somebody is somebody is dealing with their demons of lust and um, it, they got several, they hosted several demons. Um, yeah, and so, you know, I don't know how somebody's going to take that. I mean, I don't know if you want to pray for somebody, but you, that's what, that's what's going to, that's what's going to set somebody apart. You know, like something about you comes along once in a blue moon and saying, okay, you know what? Instead of me being impulsive and jumping to conclusions about things, let me start praying for people. Cause I don't really know what the whole situation is. I don't need to know the backstory, but I need to start praying for people that could be being preyed upon. And this looks like it's, you know, like I said, it could be somebody in your family, you know, that, that is being preyed upon and somebody don't even know it. They so busy running around doing so anyway. So let's say, I am free to be me. I am free to live fully. I am present in this moment. I'm not bound by my circumstances. I am stronger than fear or doubt. I have the power to create a new reality. So you could have a whole lot of, um, uh, you could have a whole lot of familiar spirits around you, Aries, where, and I say this all the time, they could be like literally right outside your door trying to get familiar with you. You could have, if you live in a condo or apartment or whatever you live in a neighborhood and people trying to get familiar with everything you got going on in your house and it's like they just piling up more and more and more piling up around you and like somebody is not paying attention and so source says get focused on whatever it is you're trying to do you know because source is trying to help you to um, break generational cycles chains and curses and so that's what it feels like somebody's being jumped in the spirit. Like, so your anxiety level could be getting heightened because somebody could feel like, okay, you're on your throne, you're happy, charismatic, and free. Source is keeping you booked and busy and burdened. Not, it's getting booked and busy and not burdened and bitter, but that's what it could feel like. It could literally feel like, okay, almost paranoid. Like, okay, who, who, who is, is my neighbor? Is it the people? Is it the people across the street? Is my the guy who mows my lawn? Is it the person who came to clean out the gutters in the house? Like, who, who is it, right? You don't have to be paranoid. So it's the same. 
but you have to learn how to understand familiar spirits and because and you have to understand familiar spirits like moving too fast in relationships in other words somebody gonna have to understand that you moving too fast in relationships when people realize okay this isn't for me should not cause rage and that's where the impulsive comes in it's like just impulsively jumping into stuff so it's just like you know, getting too familiar too fast. Somebody has familiar with that. Like when you get to, when you move too fast in your relationship, that's what Soul's trying to tell somebody. It's like, sit on your throne. You have a great attitude. You know, you have a great attitude. Some people may think you're a hothead from your past because of the impulsiveness. It's just something like you put all your heart into something and just say, okay, it didn't work out and then get mad. That's the, that's Mars, that fighting spirit. Um, but the hot-headedness does not make people run. Wisdom will cause a person to get focused. They're not running from anything. That's wisdom. People saying, okay, you know, I'm focused. I don't want to be around that kind of energy. So that's what social is trying to help somebody to do is for you to free yourself and say, you know what? I, want, I don't want to cause any emotional wounding to anybody. If they want to be a part of something, I'm not going to be one that's going to prey on somebody if they want to be a part of something. That's what's going to make somebody rare. I need to get focused. I need to show compassion as I'm pouring into myself. That's what's going to make you rare. I don't want to be a part of, you know, so however the tower falls, that, that tower card is there. So usually when people black out and they come to and, you know, the room is on fire, you know, that may be all fun and games at first until, until something is done. And then somebody go, oh my God, I had no idea. I just, I could, I just lost control. So, so it's the same. Somebody need to get that under order. Get that under. Here we have, I am strong. Yeah. Somebody needs to, somebody definitely want to get that under control. The source needs somebody as a prayer warrior on your rebirth side, not a person who preys on people who have already been preyed upon, who wants to be a part of something. Grief. Tears are what happen when the ice in the heart melts. Yeah, somebody's been holding on to something. That's why you see, that's why you see 666 here, because somebody's been holding on to some grief for a long time. And that grief can come out as rage. You know, it can come out as just like this fire on people. And, the, and that's, yeah, some, some people don't, you know, some people don't find that out until they forced to, to see the danger in that. So I see somebody, you know, defending your decision to move on from something without even coming across as defensive. Like something had to humble somebody. Something had to sit somebody down and say, okay, now wait a minute. You need it. Something needs to stop. So um, let's see what the number is. 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 17, I am independent. The quality of work that you can produce when you're going at it alone is almost unbelievable. You are as independent as you are ambitious, capable of performing every step of the way with uh, efficiency, focus, and skill. Yep, efficiency. So somebody, somebody's going to have to grieve. Somebody's going to have to let the tears fall. You know, go outside and get some, somebody's going to fire up the fire bowl and say, okay, I need to toss all of this into a burning bowl and move on with my life. Stop holding on to something that's causing you to look like you're a devil, like you the devil, then the devil incarnate, like... So it's just saying somebody's going to have to break that chain. One and seven is eight. Somebody's going to have to break that cycle um, and um, and get focused. Like really get focused on your purpose here on planet Earth. Because somebody, like I said, you're going to feel like you have a whole new lease on life. You got at least eight streams of income in you. But somebody's going to have to leave their vault door closed and just be okay with other people closing out their vault door too. Just like, okay, they moved on with their life. I'm moving on with mine. The end. The end the end. That is what I have for you. Thank you for joining me. I will see you all in the next video. Bye.